Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here to talk to you about my study into whether main crop potatoes can be grown in a regenerative system. This topic is something I've been increasingly wondering since I returned home to the family farm just over seven years ago. I entered the industry with little knowledge but a huge appetite for learning. Whilst trying to satiate this appetite, I began reading books by authors such as Gabe Brown and Nicole Masters. It all seemed very simple. Move less soil. Reduce fertiliser. Yields will increase while pesticides will become redundant. Great. But how do I do this with our most important crop, potatoes? The six years of potato cropping since I returned home to the farm have brought two years of drought in 2018 and again in 2022, and two years of autumn flooding in 2020 and again this year. Plateauing yields are also another great problem for the potato industry throughout the world. This has only made this question more pertinent. With these problems being seen globally, I knew I needed to try and find out how we can future-proof our nation's favourite carb, both on our farm and nationally. I set out on my study with these three objectives. To understand how growers are implementing regenerative practices in global potato production. Explore what changes can be made to standard farm practice in the UK while still growing high yielding crops and to create a plan for reducing high input demands on UK potato crops. My study saw me travel to three continents, visiting the USA and Canada, Australia and New Zealand, followed by France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and here in the UK. In visiting these countries, I often saw farms experiencing a myriad of challenges, such as low or excessive rainfall, pest disease, disease pressure, and many more. To counter these challenges, I saw many different systems. Firstly, let's take a look at a conventional cropping system for main crop potatoes here in the UK. Here we have six passes most growers will implement. Plowing, cultivating, bed forming, bed tilling, de-stoning, and then planting. With tilling and uh, cultivating sometimes done more than once. Once the potatoes are in the ground, you can then see pre-emergence herbicide stacks applied with more peri-emergence herbicide often used. As many as 15 fungicides can then be applied to a determinate main crop variety. And throw in the odd insecticide and you've got a very busy spray driver. Once all this has been done, the heavy sieving of a potato harvester and trailers leading the crop out of the field leave the soil in a very compacted, unhappy state especially on a year like this. The key conclusions I've drawn from my study are the healthiest soils I encountered used all regenerative principles in unison. This brings me to the principles of regenerative agriculture, of which I'm sure many of you have already seen. Diversity, livestock integration, minimise soil disturbance, maintain living roots, and protect the soil surface. But how are these applicable to potatoes? Diversity can come in the form of cover cropping, cash crops, and also companion cropping. Having a diverse portfolio of cash and cover crops will mean that there is less likely to be a build-up of pest and disease. Soil armour means leaving the soil covered or, protecting, or protected using plants through winter, or potato rows can contain large amounts of residue to help prevent soil erosion from both wind and rain. One of the greatest challenges main crop potato growers face is soil erosion. Maintaining living roots means plants are actively growing for as many days as possible. This has multiple benefits, including feeding soil biology, pumping carbon into the soil, helping aggregate and structure the soil, and also preventing soil erosion in extreme rain or wind events. Minimising soil disturbance is practised by only moving as much soil as possible. It has been shown in many trials that in moving too much soil, not only are we hampering our soil structure and health, we're also hampering yield and leaving our soils more exposed to soil erosion. And finally, livestock integration means getting hooves into arable fields 
or introducing organic amendments such as manure. This is a great opportunity to build fertility and organic matter, but it is also a way to remove residue prior to planting. The introduction of manure, be it through grazing or raw manure, has the benefit of stimulating soil biology also. A perfect example of a farm putting all of these principles into practice was Buckley Farms in Mount Gambia, South Australia. Terry Buckley is growing potatoes on a six-year rotation with a five-year multi-species lay in between potato crops. He puts the improvement of his light and sandy soils down to moving the soil less with just seven passes of a tractor between grass crops. When cultivating prior to potatoes, he tries to leave the soil in larger aggregations to allow air into the soil and allowing his biology to breathe. He further helps his biology by applying compost, and after 20 years of soil improvement, Terry's potatoes are used as the gold standard for Smith's chips in Australia. My second conclusion reached, and a further look into one of the principles, is a wide, diverse rotation. It is needed to allow the harsh events of potato cultivation. By having such a rotation, this means the soil structure, as well as the soil biology, has chance to recover from the extremities of potato cultivation. When visiting Canadian scholar Harold Perry, I saw firsthand the impact a wide rotation uh, a wide rotation featuring broad spectrum of species in both cash and cover crops can have on soils and potato cropping. Harold grows cereals, seed canola, legumes, cover crops and potatoes with as many as 16 species in his cover crops. Harold carefully selects cover crop species that won't hamper, hamper potato production but will build organic matter, cycle nutrients add diversity alongside reducing pest and disease pressure. The third conclusion I've reached is as soil movement is decreased, yields will increase. By keeping more of the soil profile intact at planting, more air can get into the row, meaning biology is able to breathe. Aggregation will also remain, resulting in rainfall or water applied being used rather than running off. A great example of minimising soil movement is at the McCain farm of the future. They are using a planter adapted to plant directly into rows created in autumn. The autumn created rows then have a cover crop spread, which is then killed by the cold winter. This system means soil spends no time without roots holding it together, helping to minimise erosion on very erosion-prone land. Since moving to this system, they've seen an increase in yield and quality and a visible decrease in soil erosion. The final conclusion I found is that thriving biology is going to unlock the ability to reduce pesticides and fertilizers. As more of your soil's nutrients are made available by soil biology, less artificial fertilizer is needed. Healthy soil biology also has the ability to help fight off disease, which whilst resulting healthy plants also become unappealing to pests such as aphids. I saw on Ben Taylor Davies' farm in Herefordshire the ability of a healthy soil and plants to resist disease. After years of hard work focusing on improving soil biology, he su successfully grows potatoes without any pesticides. Ben introduced no-till farming onto his farm after his Nuffield scholarship, as well as now having multiple species of livestock grazing his fields. He also produces compost from the, his cattle to further feed biology. Following my findings, I recommend main crop potato growers do the following. Utilise cover cropping in conjunction with a wide rotation. I've seen across many different farms in many different countries the effect a wide rotation can have on both pest and disease pressure, but also on soil structure and health. Cover cropping can be used in two ways, to try and build soil health using multiple species or by fumigation as a single species crop. The multi-species approach can have a great impact on reducing heavy cultivation needs prior to the potato crop as it improves the soil structure. It also is a great way to increase soil organic matter through root exudates and increase nutrient cycling. 
single species cover crops in the form of mustard. Or rad uh, for fumigation, or radishes can be used to reduce nematode populations. Whilst biofumigation is detrimental to soil biology, the reduction in nematicide needs can be significant. If nematode populations can be reduced, this can pave the way for further soil health improvements. My next recommendation is to move no more than the top 25 centimetres of soil and allow for larger aggregate size and move to direct planting where applicable, with no-till used in non-potato years. Seed beds have been over-cultivated for decades and this is leading to compaction, loss of organic matter and ultimately plateauing yields. I've seen on many farms across the globe that if we can break the cycle of over-cultivation, our soils will improve quicker from the crop of potatoes. It can also see farmers have massively decreased establishment costs. Whilst main crop potatoes are largely grown on soil with stone content, I recommend farms without stone move to direct planting. This again will lower establishment costs, whilst meaning less soil movement is also seen. This has been proven to reduce erosion and maintain or increase yields. For other crops in rotation, I recommend as little soil movement as possible, ideally establishing crops with a no-till drill if soils allow. And my final recommendation is to focus on the living, the dead, and the very dead. So what does this mean? The living means helping the soil biology we have in our soils flourish. This can be done in many ways. Cover cropping, reduce soil movement, or livestock integration, all of which will enhance soil biology. The dead means incorporating cover or cash crop residues into our soils. Or spreading manures, this will not only return nutrients into our soils, but it will also provide a food source for your soil biology. And the dead, the, sorry, and the very dead. The very dead comes in the form of compost. Compost is a great source of stable nutrients but it is also a very stable form of organic matter which is needed in our soils for multiple reasons, including water holding capacity, but also it feeds our soil biology. So conference, I pose the question to you, can main crop potatoes be grown in a regenerative system? With the evidence I have provided, I firmly believe if main crop potatoes are going to be grown in our rotation, we have to implement these recommendations. Finally, I would like to thank the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust, my friends and family, 2022 Nuffield Scholars, all of you for supporting me on this journey, and most importantly, Alan and Anne Beckett for sponsoring me and having faith in me. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.